Why, hi, everybody. This is OD666666. Uh, yeah, I just got a uh, update from MVD. Want to do a few, few of the reviews and recommendations for the, some of the stuff they sent me. Uh, first off, I got a nice little uh, Steelbook Blu-ray of uh, Hardcore Logo 1 and 2. Uh, it's a pretty nice little uh, Steelbook, but yeah, I'll open it up. God damn it. It's got a nice little inlay in there, pictures and such. But yeah, now I haven't got a chance to watch the uh, second one yet. But the uh, hardcore logo, the first one here, this this it was a really damn good movie. If you're into like band movies and uh, punk rock and stuff like that, it's got a cameo in there, which re really surprised me. I thought it was really cool by Joey Ramone. Uh, it's got DOA in there for a split second, playing like a little you know part of their live show. Um, now, basically, this is about a uh, punk band that used to be around back in the day. Of course, it's a fictitious punk band, but they used to be around back in the day, and they broke up, and now they're uh, getting back together for, like, a, a benefit show, a benefit tour. And uh, the lead singer's name is Joe Dick, and he's, he's telling everybody this benefit tour is for this guy, this punk legend named Bucky Haight. And uh, supposedly Bucky Haight, he's telling everybody, got shot and had to get his legs amputated. Uh, so it's a benefit concert to get all, all the bandmates back together because this, this is the only thing that Joe Dick knows how to do is play punk rock and be in a punk rock band. Uh, he's just, he's got a really, I mean, uh, his personality, personality wise, he's just a dick, and it, but it, he's, he's a cool dick. Um... The band, you know, it's it's full of a bunch of different kind of characters. You got the you, you just got one dude that's just totally insane. He's actually psychotic. He needs to take his meds. He's always writing stuff and kind of kind of getting all hippie-ish. You know, he writes kind of hippie-ish shit. And then you got the other guy. He's a big drunk. You know, he's just a party animal guy. Uh, and then you got the uh, the uh, lead guitar player named Billy Talent. Which uh, you know he's been he's been he's been Joe Dick's best friend for years, and uh, he just he got he got a job offer for this like you know big budget you know band this you know uh, little record deal. They want him to replace their guitarist, so now he thinks he's about to go all Hollywood and shit and get a lot of money. So Joe Dick don't like that. He, there's a little tension between there. It shows him going around touring and stuff. A bunch of crazy shit happens. Now, like I said, if you're into punk rock and stuff like that, I definitely would check this movie out. I thought it was a really cool, really well-made movie. The end of it, like, totally su caught me by surprise. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, just a, just a damn good flick. And then I got, oh, Dustin Mills, uh, Night of the Tentacles. This one was really fun. This is the same dude that did a uh, puppet Mo puppet monster massacre and zombie a hole. Uh, this one basically is about uh, this dude. He lives in an apartment, you know, by himself. Has no girls. He's just, you know, he he does uh, art, but it's like erotic sci-fi art. So like he's all down on himself. His neighbors, he can always hear his neighbors screwing next door. Uh, it's just depressing for him. And then, uh, but he's got this n new neighbor downstairs that he's got, like, a crush on. He's seen her before. He hasn't talked to her, but he's got, like, this instant crush on her. So he always puts his ear to the floor so he can hear her. And she always comes home and comes home. Every time she comes home, she starts masturbating. So he, he listens to the floor so he can hear her masturbating. And then he's, like, whacking it as he's got his, you know, head on the floor. Anyway, he ends up having, like, a heart attack because he's got a bad heart after he beats off. And, uh, so, what happens is Satan comes, which Satan looks cool, it looks like a freaking alien, but Satan comes, and he's like, look, I'll make you a deal. He's like, I'll give you a new heart if you, uh, what was it? it well, pretty much if you sell me your soul, I can't think of the whole contract, but if you sell me your soul, you know, but he says this heart will never die. As long as you take care of this heart, it will never die, and so that pretty much means you won't die. But, you know, there's, of course, there's a little a catch to it. So the dude's like, okay, you know, sounds good, whatever. So the dude gets it, and Satan gives him his heart, but his heart is in, like, this, this treasure chest, like this little box. And he's like, where's my heart? He's like, Satan's like, it's in that box. 
he's like, okay, so how do I take care of it? And so you figure out the way he takes care of the heart is he's got to bring the heart fresh bodies because the heart feeds on live bodies. It's kind of like, kind of reminded me a little bit of like a brain damage. I mean, of course, not no offense, but it's not as good as brain damage. That's one of my favorites. But it did have a feeling of brain damage in there uh, just because he's got this little, you know, pet heart that he's got to feed, you know, humans to so he can sustain the heart and stay alive. Um, you know, he ends up falling in love with the neighbor downstairs. She gets involved in the shit that's going on. It's got some pretty neat special effects in it. It does have a little bit of CGI in there. But like Mr. Parker said, when this dude, when Dustin Mills does CGI, it's kind of, it's it's more of in a fun way. It's more of in a fun, like, full moon kind of way. It's not a shitty, like, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot more fun than usual CGI. I usually hate CGI, but he pulls it off very well. Uh, Night of Tentacles, look at that cover. The cover's great. It's got the little bit of cover art inside, which I thought was really cool. So there's the cover art inside. And yeah, no, this one's this one's recommended. Very cool. And then they sent me uh, oh Tim Ritter's new one, Deadly Dares, Truth or Dare Four. Uh, I thought this was pretty good. Uh, now you have you have to like the uh, you know the original Truth or Dare, but uh, you have to like the original Truth or Dare. Now this one, unfortunately, is not shot on VHS. It is shot on digital, but it still has kind of a home movie quality to it. This one's about a, a dude, you know, he just loses his job, his girlfriend tells him to fuck off, pretty much, uh, he's down the dumps, his friend's like, well, let's go out and party, you know, this and that, so the dude goes out, you know, he's like, whatever, so they go back to this house after they've been drinking a few, and, uh, they decide to get on the internet, like, y'all, you can meet chicks on the internet, and blah, 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 and, uh, so that one guy's like, well, go to this site, it's called, a uh, Truth or Dare, it's a Truth or Dare site. And, uh, basically these people get on this site and they do truth or dare and it shows them doing these dares. It's kind of showing you where, like, you know, things like YouTube have been going, you know, with people doing crazy shit just to get noticed. And also it, it goes along with the fact of Mike, you know, Michael Strauber, you know, his legend still lives on and people are doing this, you know, it's like a dedication to Michael Strauber, you know, this website's up for him. But it's more or less like a, you know, dare website where you see all kinds of wacky stuff. Anyway, so this dude sees this really hot chick on there. And he's like, play truth or dare with her. Play truth or dare with her. So he's like, okay. So she starts telling daring him to do stuff. And it gets weirder and weirder and weirder until she's like, you know, I want you to carve my name into your stomach. And I want you to, uh, you know, just different stuff like that. It's just getting weirder and weirder. And then she's, she's like, you know, I want you to go rob an old lady, you know, steal her purse, and I want you to film it, and she's like, we're gonna meet up soon, just keep on doing these dares, don't let, you know, so he gets obsessed with this chick, and he starts doing all this wild shit, and it just escalates, and escalates, and escalates, and I thought it was a pretty cool movie, uh, there's a big twist at the end, which I thought was pretty cool, uh, this really isn't too bad of a flick, uh, if you're into Tim Ritter, and his kind of stuff, um, I definitely would check this one out, I preferred it over, uh, the third one, I just, that one was just really slow, and just, this one, this one kept itself going. The only thing about it is there's this one chick in it, man. Her, her southern accent is so thick, it's just like, oh, it's, it's rough to listen to. Then I got this one. This one's pretty cool. Uh, The Death of Andy Kaufman. This dude always interested me just because he was such a, he was just such an original, just such a weirdo, did whatever he wanted to do, you know, whether people laughed or not, you know, he was just a madman, did whatever he wanted to do, go up on stage, eat dinner, whatever, people would just laugh at him, uh, sing along to, you know, Mighty Mouse on a record player, just ridiculous stuff, you know, but this goes into the, uh, the conspiracy theory that Andy Kaufman may have faked his death, there's a lot of people talking about that, there's websites dedicated to it, uh, so Christopher Maloney goes around trying to find out information, you know, of, of uh, people he knew and stuff to, to see if he can find them. Uh, all in all, it's a pretty pretty interesting documentary. Uh, it does have some old clips of Andy on there, which I thought was pretty cool. It's got some medical facts, you know, of how he died, where he died, you know, what he looked like when he died, things like that, which I thought was pretty cool. It, and, and, you know, this guy's not, he's not, uh, he's not saying, oh, Andy Kaufman is still alive. He's just trying to, you know, investigate why people think this 
So he goes either way. So that's another thing I thought was really cool. He's like, I'm not sure if it's true or not. I don't think it is, but we're going to see. So, no, it's definitely a little cool documentary. Then I got this, uh, Beelzebub, uh, Surreal Sicko. Now, this movie in particular, I did not care for. It's a, uh, it's kind of a rape fantasy. Uh, a lot of naked chicks. Uh, just no real plot I could really see. But there is a second movie on here, which I think should have been the headliner, and this should have been the second movie. It's called Metalheads, and it's just a really fun movie with Bill Beelzebub in it. It's got his buddies in it. He's a, he's got a girlfriend. It all, it's always calling him a loser. You know, he's always sitting on the couch. He don't have a job. He's always getting screwed up with his friends and going out and drinking and shit, taking acid and all this kind of stuff. And uh, it's just basically just them going around, having adventures, you know, going out, taking acid. Uh, you know, his, his girlfriend ends up cheating on him. He's got to deal with that. He's got this big bully in town that's going around making him do stuff. And, uh, you know, just... It was a really fun movie. I was really surprised. He really had some uh, he had some good acting chops, and it was funny. It made me laugh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Surreal Sicko, didn't like it. But the second feature on here, which is called Metalheads, I thought was really cool. And then I got this one here, uh, The Replacements, Color Me Obsessed. It's another documentary. Uh, I, I, re I really like the early replacements. If you listen to some of their earlier stuff, it's, it was really damn good. Um, you may see me post some shit up on Facebook. Uh, their later stuff is even not that bad either, but it goes into more of a rock and roll type vibe. Their first, their, their first few albums are pretty punk rock. Uh, this is just a two disc uh, documentary on them. Uh, just goes into their past and, and what made them start and things like that, how they started. Pretty good documentary, you know, I, I do like the, the punk documentaries and things like that, the rock and roll documentaries, another, you know, love the Rocky Erickson documentary, You're Gonna Miss Me, God, if you can, if you can get, if you can watch that one, it's on Netflix, that's a damn good one, he's schizophrenic, so it's really interesting, I love the Wesley Willis documentary, that was also put out by MVD, uh, just about a schizophrenic, you know, big black dude, he's heavy, and he is out of his mind, uh, if you ever heard Wesley Willis, you know, you know what you're in for when you watch the documentary. I mean, he's he's batshit, and his his songs are funny as shit. But anyway, not a bad not a bad little documentary there. This is the only one I couldn't really get into, which I'm really surprised that I couldn't get into it. Um, Replicator. Uh, it's a real low budget film. There was a few scenes in it that, that it did entertain me a little bit at the beginning, but then it just seemed to slow down. Uh, basically, it's about these scientists. They're trying to come up with a way to make super soldiers, blah, blah, blah. So uh, they stick these dudes in this thing called a replicator because it's, it's supposed to make them come out more, you know, buff and, the per you know, the perfect soldier. But when they go in there, they come out as these hot chicks. So they're like, well, what are we going to do with this? You know, it's like making these dudes chicks and they're all horny. They're nymphomaniacs now. And uh, so what's going to go on? And they find out when a chick's... When a chick's reach an orgasmic level, they turn into alligator heads. Don't ask me. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's it's one I'm glad to have in my collection just because of the, the plot. It's just so ridiculous. But it just didn't... I don't know. It's it's It, it petered out. It petered out for me. But, uh, yeah, Replicator, eh, I don't know. But, yeah, that's it now. Just a little MVD update. I do have a Cheesy Flicks update coming up. Uh, but yeah, that's about it, so, bye.